Ahmad Rahim, uh, welcome to this course on the entrepreneurial mindset. We'll be starting with the Rocks and Quimby case, or the Burst Bees case, true to its nature. So the part one, idea generation. So the story starts in, in, in the United States of America. Rocks and Quimby is the main protagonist. She's the main character of this, of this case study. And she has her two sisters and father. Her father is a Harvard Business School graduate. She belongs to a rich class, well-established lady. And her one sister is working for Amex, other for Charles Schwab, both in the finance industry. So something special about her was that while she was young and she was in her school ages, in her school days, uh, the kids and these daughters were, were asked to make their own pocket money. And the father mm, encouraged them to make some money by doing some, making some handicrafts and doing some small chores and small household tasks or work with their father's entrepreneurial projects. And they were matched with some money. So they were asked if they make $5, and they will be given $5 with the dad. So this is the traditional mindset, an entrepreneurial mindset, which we see is adopted by many parents in the United States. And the reason is they want to inculcate that sense of responsibility and the sense of creativity and innovation from the very beginning. And they feel the importance of, uh, of money and how to make it and how to spend it. So by the time she graduated, she had saved like $5,000 and she got admitted, admitted at San Francisco School of Arts and um, a, a place where she uh, graduated without any job prospects uh, because arts was something uh, which was uh, not well taken by many employers and it was something related to one's passion and uh, she couldn't find a job. So during that process, she gets radicalized and drops out of life. And she joins a hippie group and she turns herself into a hippie and it's sort of a nomad living in a jungle. And she starts, uh, she develops an interest in, with her class fellow. And eventually she asks her dad, uh, her dad's permission to marry her class fellow. And the father is not happy with this decision and disowns her. So she eventually mar marries that gentleman and um, decides to uh, to live her own life. So while she was a child, she was called a black sheep in the family uh, because in contradiction to her sisters, uh, she didn't like traditional courses of economics and management and business and engineering. And uh, she was always interested in entrepreneurial projects, selling handmade products and working on her father's entrepreneurial projects. So she didn't like the traditional main course main courses, and that's why she was called a black sheep. And uh, in 1975, she marries on her own choice and moved to Maine. Uh, Maine is like a few hours from Boston, and she goes there, purchases 30 acres of land with her savings, and builds a small hut. She makes a small hut and starts living there, and that is the beginning of our journey. And it is nineteen seventy seven. In nineteen seventy seven, uh, she is bestowed with twins. And these twins, um, they uh, the lifestyle of Roxanne and her husband was that of a hippie li lifestyle. And both of them, they used to. You see, lived in the hut. They had a small lake before them. They, they used to work for like one to two days a week or sometimes a few days in, in a month and use that savings for their food. And they were living a life of nomads. But as she developed a sense of responsibility with the kids coming in, uh, she convinces and tries to convince her husband uh, that life has become a burden and we need to make some regular money. And uh, 
life is a burden for her. She has a wood burning stove. She goes for minimum wage jobs. That makes her tired. The husband is not that cooperative. He is. He belongs to a hippie lifestyle, and that that leads to some differences and uh, in in the in the couple. And eventually, in 1981, the marriage breaks. And uh, Roxanne Kumbi. Uh, Roxanne Kumbi. Uh, Develops that courage and determination. She takes her two kids on a on a on a sort of a box which can be rolled on ice. She put her luggage and the two kids and dragged that that skate to the other side of the forest. She purchased a small tent and she had a wooden stove. She sets up a small place on the other side of the lake, and there. Uh, she starts living. She starts living in a small tent, and in the nearby town, there is a, a small place where a weekly market takes place, a flea market, where selling and purchase take place, and uh, Roxanne can be occasionally, occasionally visits this place, and sometimes she does a waitressing job. And during this uh, tours and visits, uh, she found an opportunity to to sell and purchase things in the market. And here, she recalls her childhood when she used to make handmade candles. And those handmade candles and handmade things gives her an idea to do something, to make something which can be sold here. So, um, one of the questions which arises is, which we ask our students in the entrepreneurial courses, is that what gives this lady a courage to step over from this side to this side. She is uh, not that, uh, she's not living a luxurious lifestyle, um, a rich lifestyle, but she's still living a, a life of hardship and hard work and commitment and working day and night. But the divorce and the, after the marriage breaks apart, she takes uh, another hard decision. She, start, she decides to leave this place and make her own destiny. And as Iqbal says, up in dunya, ab paida kar agar zindo mein. Make your, make your own world if you are among the living. So where does this courage come from? So many people in the class say that she was strong, she was intelligent. Uh, but when you reflect closely, I think a lot of it uh, relates to her training when she was a child. She was uh, trained to be hardworking, resilient, hardship facing, and she was trained to make her own living. And uh, she was made to do small tasks. So that quality makes her go and buy a tent and get this wooden stove and get the water from the lake and get the fruit from the from this forest and get the woods from the forest. So she is self-sustainable. And that is the courage which gives that is the courage and determination which gives her a new hope. And she explores uh, things from her surroundings. And as life passes on, uh, one day, uh, Roxanne Kumbi, uh, she used to go to the jungle to to get some woods for her uh, wooden to for for fire. And one day, as she goes into the jungle, and she sees a very interesting uh, scene, and she finds that there is a there is an eight by eight box a wooden house, and right in the center of the jungle, there's an old truck an old motorcycle, and there's a person with a beard which was never trimmed. They're like 30 wooden boxes uh, to for beekeeping. And as she sees this gentleman, and she inquires who he is, and it was introduced that this is Mr. Burt, who is a dropout from New York. He's a photographer, and he's dropped interest in life, and he has migrated to this place. And he has this piece of land in his name, and he has 30 uh, beehives, and he makes enough money uh, to make his living. He has an old truck, and this is his lifestyle. He has a dog, and he lives in a peaceful and a comfortable way. So this interaction uh, led to uh, a, a further deep conversation, and it came into Roxanne's mind, and she asked, sir, can you 
teach me beekeeping? Is is it can I can I learn this? Can I do that as well on my piece of land? And Bert was kind enough, and he helped her to learn. And in a few weeks' time, uh, Roxanne was also doing beekeeping. And during this process, few weeks passed. And one fine day, as Roxanne met Bert, she saw a heap of wax lying here. And she asked Bert, sir, what is this? He said, this is a heap of wax. I take the honey out and discard this. And this is for many years. And a heap is growing and growing and growing. So as Roxanne Kumbi uh, looks at the heap, and she comes up with a very interesting idea. And she says, sir, when I used to go to school and I used to make candles out of these wax, sir, if you allow, I can make candles out of that. So Bert had uh, no reason to say no. And he said, yes, why not? Give it a try. And um, Roxanne takes a, some wax from the heap and she takes it, cleans it. She puts it in a, in a, in a piece of, she, she warms, makes, heats it up, makes it cold. And then using her uh, art skills, she comes up with a very interesting design of a candle. A candle is made. And uh, she goes to a school fair and she is able to make some dollars. And that is the beginning of a very interesting journey. And uh, this is a picture of Bert. And this is uh, later on after he grew up, he made his uh, house a bit better. So uh, in a way, the, this, the first part uh, starts here where we discuss the, the formation of the idea. Where do ideas come from? Where do ideas come from? Do ideas come from mm, reading literature, coming out of a business plan, uh, reflecting and talking? So we will try to discuss this in detail as we move further. Uh, but we saw in this very interesting part one that the ideas are originating from our surroundings. And the ideas are originating from the passion and hobby and the things which she loves. And the ideas are originating from her need, her necessity. So we'll try to understand more in detail in the next uh, videos. Thank you very much.